guys, Matt here and welcome to the 15k Q&A video. I've been promising to do this for like a week and a half now and I really wanted to get it done today. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit down, I'm going to answer the questions. You'll see them on the screen, of course, and we'll just kind of go through a few things. It's just, and also, again, once again, thank you so much for getting me 15k. It genuinely is so strange. Um, but hey, here's to 15,402 or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's get into some questions then, shall we? The first question comes from Tiluska12. Kune, why do you support Fulham? Now, this is one of those things where um, most people would just go, oh, why, why shouldn't I? But Or, you know, why do I need a reason? But the fact is, there is a reason. And that is that when I was a kid, um, back in the day, this was back when ITV had the rights to Premier League highlights. So just to give you an idea. Um, I didn't really support a team, but I liked, I was getting more and more into football. And it was kind of difficult because I didn't come from a huge footballing family. Like, my mum is a Palace fan and my dad isn't really he likes football but he was not a fan of like a specific team although most of his family back in scotland are uh hibbies they're all hibs fans uh so there's that but i was never sort of brought up to support a team so i had to pick for myself and obviously you kind of go well i could support the local team or you could support the team or your friends support which in my area is usually spurs and people or my area where I, you know where i grew up was spurs so or arsenal or one of the london sides generally spurs arsenal chelsea that or west ham um but I was watching, like, it used to be called the Premier League with Des Lynham at the time, and I just really liked the way Fulham played. This was back when uh, when they had Brian McBride and people like that. Obviously, they had Brian McBride much later, but back in the early days, Louis Saha. Yeah, that's right. Um, I just really liked the way they played, and I was like, you know what? If I'm going to pick a team, it may as well be Fulham. They're London as well, but a slightly more underdoggy type of side, and that's just how it happened, really. Chris Conway asked, how old were you when you first started playing Football Manager? What got you interested in the game? Okay, so this is a weird one. Um, I haven't played Football Manager for very long, as some of you will already know. I The first Football Manager game I owned, which is up there somewhere, I think, in disc form, would you believe, uh, is FM13. That, that's literally, like, what, three games ago? Four? Uh, and the only reason I bought that was because I used to play FIFA Manager. I, I will admit that now. I used to play FIFA Manager because I did not know about what well, I, I knew, but I just thought that it was the same, basically, and I can't believe I thought that. But, uh, yeah. So, at Christmas that year this was quite a few years ago now, I got a Kindle. And someone bought me with the Kindle a book called Football Manager Stole My Life by Ian McIntosh. He's got a new book out, which you should really check out because it is very, very good. Um, but it, I got that as well. So I was like, screw it. I'll read this since it's about football and I like football. Read it and I was like, this game sounds both awful in the terms of what it could do to you based on some of the stories in it and also brilliant because of the depth of it. So I was like, you know what? Whatever. It was January at the time. I went to Zavi. So, yep, that's right. Blast in the past again. And I bought myself a copy of the game uh, for like 15 quid or something. And I played it and it was, it was decent. And I kind of just grew to love it from there, basically. The FM Kid asks, do you think Wimbledon can get back to the BPO in real life? If not, how high can they go? I see no reason why they can't. They've got a great fan fan base there already um which is you know basically the same fan base that they had 15 years ago essentially i don't suppose many of them went over to support the mcdonald's did they um so yeah i see no reason why they can't they've got a decent catchment area they're in london if they get the right financial backing it could work if they get the right manager it could work the fact is a team coming from league two to the premier league in a short space of time or even just over the course of a, lo a longer space of time is not impossible still bournemouth are the living proof of that look at the situation they found themselves in just a few years ago and now here they are like five or six years ago they were bottom of league two with a huge points deduction and they stayed up and they've got promoted and promoted and promoted and here they are in the premier league so if bournemouth can do it why can't wimbledon that's what i say on that one brandon fuller actually has two questions but we're going to do both while we're here anyway uh the first the second answer is uh no no i have never been recognized and i don't think i ever will be uh because come on now i mean really um i just don't think that would ever happen to me because i don't know one i don't have a big enough following which is fine i'm quite happy with the following i've got and two i'm a pretty plain looking person it's not like i've got the red hair that i used to have back when i was a teenager um so yeah i don't think that's ever going to be the case but the second one uh, what's your favorite pokemon from the original 150 i really wanted to put this question in here because back in the day like the original pokemon series when that came out in the late 90s or was it the mid 90s i loved pokemon and pretty much everyone else my age did as well so it wasn't exactly a weird thing at the time um and frankly, I still have an affinity for Pokemon. It's pretty damn awesome. But yeah, since they added about 9 million Pokemon, it kind of got a bit lost in it. But the original Pokemon, weirdly, my favourite Pokemon of the 150 was Chansey. Because of course it was. Um, so yeah, I just really liked Chansey. That was, I don't know why, I can't even remember why I liked Chansey, but I just did. There was just something so freaking adorable about it that I just really liked it as a Pokemon. FIFA Mad 114 asks, what's your most embarrassing moment during school? Now, interestingly, I, I was at a mate's house when um, this video went up for the questions and this came through while I was having dinner with them and we were talking about this and obviously some of the stuff I won't talk about, but there was one thing that I remembered having thought about that, which I'm going to talk about now. Basically, during a PE lesson back in, it must have been sort of year eight, year nine, probably year nine. Um, for those of you in other countries, year nine, I was probably about uh, 14, maybe 13, 14 years old. And um, basically, 
we used to have to wear white shorts generally um, in those days. And somehow, some red paint from what was essentially, I assume it must have been like a, an art from art class or from wood tech or one of those classes, had somehow got smeared all around the crotch area of the the shorts. And because there was no like shorts available for me to change into, I had to do a PE lesson wearing like sh white shorts that were smeared in red. So it just looked like I'd bled out of my rectum all over the shorts or something and it was so embarrassing that's the most embarrassing thing i could think of uh that i had to do at the time um, so yeah akira guyet asks do you think fulham will get promoted or relegated in the next five years from the championship i think yes one of those two and i don't think it's going to be the promoted one we've not won since we got a new manager i don't think and i don't see us winning anytime soon i think if we don't go down this year we may well go down next year because we are trying some weird stuff um, with the, these statistical models that either work or they don't. And it's almost like, um, I don't know, I kind of feel like we've got some decent players and decent coaching staff, and then we've got freaking Rasputin there poisoning them uh, in a way. And that's what it kind of feels like to me anyway. But we'll, we'll see how that plans out. But I expect us to get relegated again. I really, really do. Rusu asks, what are your favourite bands? I've talked about this a bit in a Q&A, but my favourite band at the moment, because it does change a hell of a lot, I don't listen to as much music as I used to, but it's still a fair amount. My favourite band at the moment is still a band called Our Last Night, as though some of you have heard of them. Um, they're an American sort of post-hardcore, they used to be heavier, but they're not so much now, um, band. They're just, I just really like the vocals and some of the melodies that they come up with. But back in the day, I used to really, really love Alter Bridge as well. That was like my, when I was a teenager, Alter Bridge were like my jam. Um, and then I kind of got into heavier music and I was obsessed with Bullet For My Valentine when I was like 17 years old. So things like that. Um, although not so much anymore. Anyway, yeah, that's kind of what I'm interested in. Just generally sort of rock metal. But at the same time, I also like um, dance music and pretty much anything and post rock and like God is an Astronaut and Lights in Motion and uh, Maybe She Will and bands like that. And Explosions in the Sky as well. They're fantastic. Uh, just really sort of artsy, I suppose. And oh, I suppose you could think of it as a bit pretentious, but I just really like that type of music. I used to make music like that um, back in the day as well, as well as the band I was in before. Magnus Stephenson asks, would you rather have Fulham win a Champions League or England win the Euros this summer? That's a really simple one, unfortunately, because it is Fulham. Uh, like, as much as I... And, well, I'm actually half Scottish, so, you know, my allegiance is even less to England, but I do still obviously follow England sort of more, and particularly given that Scotland couldn't qualify for a raffle um fulham i'd still go for fulham because i am a fulham fan and i would always put my club before that because it's like your club's there all the time england uh, there's no fulham players in the england squad not that i care about that um but there never will be will there apart from bobby zamora good old bzam but no i would i would rather win, have my club win the champions league i think particularly as a fulham fan i think if you're a team that maybe wins the champions league regularly say you're a man united or a, a chelsea or Actually, that's about it, really, isn't it, for English clubs that winning the Champions League uh, or Liverpool back in the day? Um, then maybe for you, you maybe I don't know. Let me know. Actually, I'd be very curious. Would you, even if your club wins it on a more regular basis, would you rather see them still win it or England win the Euros? Um, but for me, it's Fulham all the way. BC Cameron uh, asks if you could form a band with any musicians in the world, who would you pick? This is like a, this is sort of following on to the music question, I suppose. Um, I don't know who I'd have like in every single position, but like in terms of. I don't want to go through too many, but like Mark Tremonti, who used, well, I think they are still in Alterbridge, is an amazing guitarist. And I used to really look up to him. I actually had one of his signature guitar model things back in the day. I think it's still around here somewhere. Uh, Miles Kennedy from Alterbridge as well is an unbelievable singer. But then I suppose I'd look towards the music I listen to now uh, for other positions in that band. So I really like, um, oh God. Like, for example, I don't really like Miss May I anymore, but the drummer, Jared Boyd, I thought was incredible back in the day. I keep saying back in the day. I say back in the day a hell of a lot back in the day um as for like what i would have to have some kind of, kind of harsh vocals i'd have like either the guy um ricky amarillino uh, from this or the apocalypse or maybe um is it micah or shane from oh sleeper because i just really love those bands there's some more bands i like uh, there you go mike smalling asks what is your hairstyle that is a, i don't know if that was meant to be an insult maybe i don't know i don't really care i'm gonna answer the question anyway um i'm thinking like I don't know, a ruffled mess, a fluffy mess. It gets very fluffy. It's the mo Even when it's really short, it gets stupidly fluffy. And when I blow dry it, which I've kind of had to a lot of the time, um, it gets even fluffy. There's literally nothing I can do about it. I, I tried all kinds of things. I thought about even getting my hair chemically straightened back back in the day. Um, I never did that. And the mate of mine did, though. He looked like Charlie from Busted. Funkstar Gaming asks, which current footballer would you least likely to face, uh, would you least want to face in a dark alley at three in the morning? Um... That is an interesting one. Like, if it was, like, old footballers, Roy Keane, I mean, he would walk the night and stalk... Not stalk, obviously. You know what I mean. Like, skulk in the night. That's how I picture Roy Keane. Um, the angriest man in the world. But current footballers... Um, 
To be honest, Diego Costa. I, I don't think I'd want to come face to face with Diego Costa, mainly because I'd be more like face to chin with him. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't want to meet him in a dark alley or frankly a well lit one either for that matter. Nico Sambagas, who brought uh, Din Svenska? Um, Min Svenska, they're okay. Um, <laughs> Min Inter Sobra. Lumumba Akinola asks, are you part werewolf? I wish I had your hair growth. That kind of goes back to the other one. Um, yeah, I actually shaved my beard a little bit before I did this because it was starting to look a little bit unruly or like a fisherman lost at sea or actually like more like Tom Hanks in Castaway. That's kind of what I was going for before. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just get quite a lot of hair growth, but particularly like completely hairless chest, but all on the face and the head and the legs. Everywhere else, just not on the chest. I have like one chest hair. I should probably name him at that point. BC Cameron again, actually. I feel like we've done one of your questions before. Asks Millington or Fabio. That's a really tough question, actually, because Millington, I feel like I'd still have to go for Millington at the moment because he is the Lord. He is our Lord and Savior, Millington. Whereas Fabio, I don't think he's proven himself quite to that level yet. He sort of tailed off towards the end of last season. So Millington all the way for me. Michalis Giannakidis asks, what music and what about movies and music interests? Uh, maybe favorite artist, director, uh, actor. Okay, so we'll get, we've done music already. So we're going to talk about um, yeah, movies and directors. So I guess like my favorite actor in general is a guy called Stanley Tucci. Um, a lot of you will probably know who he is. Some of you won't though because he's quite. He is obviously a famous Hollywood actor and he's been in literally so many films but i just really like him because he's never seems to be that typecast he can play so many different roles and he kind of goes under the radar a lot of it with that kind of thing um so i really as those of you that watch fortitude he was in that he played the american detective um i really really like stanley tucci um as for like female actors i i just really i wouldn't know off the top of my head like oh i really like her movies it's it's strange right? sasha alexander i really like sasha alexander um as a female actress but she's more in tv stuff these days um as for a director probably david fincher um, I can't think of a film by David Fincher that I don't like, and I guess that's kind of the best way of looking at it. He directed Fight Club, but he's also done things like he did the American adaptation of Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, uh, which a lot of people dislike. I didn't mind it, although I preferred the original ones in Swedish. Um, they were just really good films, but I didn't think it was that bad personally, but that, that's just my opinion on it. So yeah, David Fincher. That brings the questions to an end. Um, there was a few more that I was going to do, but I, I just basically had to ignore ones that were just like, can you do this save or that save? Because it's just, you know, like I, I kind of... I think with my next save, I'm going to just do something that I want to do, um, which is the Denmark one with either maybe Michelin or Copenhagen. Those are the two that I'm really sort of eyeing up one of those, one or the other, really. Um, just because I want to do something that I'm going to really enjoy, and I don't really care. I'm at the point where I just want to do things I enjoy, and I, I really think that I will enjoy that, and hopefully you guys will as well um, because of that alone. But that's kind of where I'm going with that type of thing at the moment. I'm still looking at other ideas, and I might do like a really LLM save uh, at some point as well, like um, starting in like the ninth tier or something maybe but not probably get time for it on this year it depends on how long the other save goes on for but that's kind of what i'm looking at at the moment regarding that stuff so that's what brings this to an end um, i hope you guys have enjoyed if you have of course drop a like on the video and now i do plan to stream soon again i'm looking at sorting out um a slightly better internet connection as well because that's one of the other problems with streaming i have to stream at the exact minimum like the very least you can possibly do it and at a lower frame rate as well and that's one of the other problems i've had with stream particularly as i've got a new webcam which is going to use more data because it's 1080p um so I'm hoping to stream this weekend, or rather on Friday probably, that's the plan. But again, it could depend on the computer and stuff, but I'll put up another video to let you guys know about that. But hopefully in the future, if the internet does get faster, because fiber optic has finally come. Um, yeah, that's right, I live in the 19th century. And um, yeah, hopefully that will be good, and hopefully then I can actually stream on a more regular basis, because it is something I would like to do. However, this weekend uh, on Friday, if I do do it, I'm thinking about maybe doing some foot, uh, not foot draft, <laughs> doing some draft mode stuff with some of you guys, if that's what you'd like to see, because it'd just be nice to chill, um, you know, obviously you'd have to have the game ready, and we'll do like a thing in the chat and find out who wants to do it, or something like that, just so we can have a little bit of a chat. I, I liked, my streams are more like, um, I, then if you watch the last one I did, there wasn't a lot of actual football being played. We did play FM obviously the whole time, but I spent most of the time chatting to the chat, but that's fine. That's why I like streaming. I'd love to be able to instantly have that interaction basically. So yeah, um, I'll see you guys in the next video at some point, probably tonight, almost certainly tonight. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.